If you're into film, you might have come across Gorks, a young artist and YouTuber known for his amazingly styled YouTube videos. When I first watched his videos, I was so inspired, I really wanted to know how he created them. And while my skill is nowhere near his, I found a tool that enables me to somewhat recreate his color grading style. Let me show you how it works. All right, so I don't claim to be a pro colorist or even a pro filmmaker, but I am a huge fan of Gork's art and his YouTube style. So recently when Dehancer asked me if I wanted to create some content with their plugin, I thought it would be a great opportunity to try and replicate Gork's style while showing you guys what Dehancer can do. Now, if you're not sure what Dehancer is, basically it's a plugin that enables you to achieve a realistic film look. So let's jump onto Final Cut and I'll show you roughly how I tried to emulate the Gork's look. All right, so here we are in inside Funnel Cut. And once you've installed Dehancer, all you have to do is just go to your effects tab here and then go down to film emulation. You've got Dehancer Pro right here. Now I've got some frames from my little intro. So all I have to do is just drag and drop this onto my clip. And as you can see, it will immediately apply a film look. And this isn't obviously the look I'm going for. I've got a frame here of a Gorks video that I want to use as inspiration. So this is something like how I want it to end up looking like. And obviously currently it's not looking like that at all. So the first thing that I will want to do is I'll just go through all the different options. I'm just going to turn off all the different options that I'm not ready to adjust. Now what I want to do is I just want to convert this log footage to Rec 709 and you can use the Dehancer plugin on Rec 709 footage as well. It doesn't have to be raw, which is the beauty of it. So you can just select your source. So there's all sorts of different source options for me. I just want to choose a camera. I'm going to choose Sony because I shot this on a Sony ZVE-1. So I'll just go into ZVE-1 and then select the format, which is S-Log3, s Gamma 3 Cine. And as you can see, that instantly converts it to Rec 709. So you don't need any extra LUTs, you don't need conversion LUTs, you don't need anything like that. You can do it all right in the Dehancer plugin. Now just below that, you can adjust the base footage. So if I just compare it against Gorks's footage, it's looking pretty similar in terms of color temperature. So I might leave that where it is. Exposure, his frame's a little bit darker, so I might just turn it down a touch. We can always adjust that later. That's looking pretty good. You can adjust the tint here as well, but it's looking pretty good where it is. All right, so from here, we go down to film. And this is where you can choose your film profile. So as you can see, there's a whole stack of different types of film um, that can be emulated with Dehancer. So I'll turn this on. And as you can see, this isn't quite the look we're going for. It's a bit too kind of cool and desaturated. The one I used for this video was Kodak Vision 3 500T. And as you can see, it gives me a bit less contrast and the color temperature is a bit off, but we can adjust that as we go. And you can just go through and try out all these different ones. They all have some really unique different looks depending on the vibe you're going for. There's just all sorts of different ones to choose from. But I'm just going to stick to this Kodak Vision 3 and then I'm just going to use the push pull to adjust the color temp a bit so I might move it in the warmer direction so that's a little bit better it's looking a bit more like what we want now the next setting you've got is film compression so typically with film over digital footage I think it's particularly in the highlights highlights tend to be a lot more compressed so if we turn film compression on you can see the highlights are really compressed drop down quite a lot and that's really a distinct look that you only tend to get from film and if we go back to Gorks's example, you can see his highlights are quite compressed as well. Even just here on the pen, you can see it's quite compressed, similar to here, the highlights on these pens, compressed, compressed. If you turn it off, these are quite bright compared to that. So we'll leave that turned on. I might just adjust the white point as well so we can compress those whites even more. That's a little bit more similar to what Gorks has got. It's a very muted highlight. You can adjust the tonal range. So I think I'm actually going to set it to about, let's start at 30 for see how we go all right so next we've got expand and that's kind of the inverse of film compression so it lets you bring up your highlights and black points but i'm not going to worry about that today so i'm just going to leave that one off and we've got print so this lets you essentially pick the kind of paper that this film is being printed on so this is how in-depth dehancer gets as an emulator so i found kodak 2383 print film is quite good so i'm just going to enable that and as you can see we're starting to get a bit more of a film feel if i just play with the settings got target white so i'm just going to reduce that a bit so it's a bit warmer it's a bit similar to gorks got the tonal contrast because his is definitely a bit more contrasty so i'm going to up that a little bit that's definitely looking a bit more similar to his might even go a bit higher that's looking pretty good color density and again this is something that's 
pretty typical with film, I believe. Film often has this really almost saturated look, but I believe it has less to do with this overall saturation of the colors and more to do with the color density. So I might turn that right up just to 100 because that's looking a bit similar to what Gorx has got. I'll just bring it back a little bit. That's looking pretty good. So now we move on to the color head and this enables you to kind of color grade your footage to a degree. It enables you to adjust the tone of the shadows, mint toads and highlights and all the other color heads. So I'm just going to turn that on. And I noticed in Gorx's footage, his shadow tone is looking a little bit different to mine. So I might adjust the shadow tone, make it a little bit cooler just to match his. So I think that's looking pretty similar there. And those mid-tones are still looking a little bit warmer in Gorksa. So I'm just gonna turn up the mid-tone warmth a little, just to there, that's looking pretty good. So now we're starting to get a lot closer to Gorksa's look. So the next thing, which is kind of the most noticeable thing when you're trying to emulate film, which is the film grain. And as you can see, and if you've seen any of Gorksa's videos, you know all of his footage has a really nice film grain look to it. So let's just turn that on. As you can see, this is already applying a pretty heavy film grain look. So I'm just going to want to tweak it a little bit just to get it more subtle like it is in Gorks's footage. So the first thing is to change the film type from negative to positive. And I find that just integrates the film grain a lot more. It makes it look a lot more natural. Might just reduce the amount just a touch just because his isn't too intense. And then we've got film resolution. So again, one of the noticeable things when it comes to film emulation is that often true film footage actually isn't that sharp. So you can see here that the parts of the image that are actually in focus aren't super sharp. Whereas on digital, you tend to get really sharp, clean lines, especially if you're using a good lens. So we kind of want to dehance rather than enhance that particular aspect of the footage. And film resolution basically lets you kind of take down the film resolution of your footage just to make it look a little bit more like film. And so there we can see it's a little less sharp. It's a little bit more blurry, especially around those edges, which again is more similar to what Gorks has got in his footage. Next, we've got halation. Basically what it is, it adds kind of a red glow around the highlights in your footage. Footage. And it's basically just simulating light being spilled onto the red layer in film footage. I don't fully understand how it works, but it's super noticeable in footage that's been shot in film. So you can kind of see it here even. We've got just a little bit of this sort of red fringing happening on the pen. So we're just going to add that in using the halation setting. So if you enable that, so as you can see, it kind of adds a bit of extra warmth and you can see a little bit like around the edges here, we've got a little bit of that orange glow happening around the highlights on the pen writing. So I might just adjust the settings a little bit. I'm just gonna turn the amplify up a bit and then the local diffusion. So you can really see those red fringing starting to come out really strongly if you turn the local diffusion up. So I might just turn up just a little bit. So it's a little bit more obvious, but not too obvious. Because again, we don't wanna go overboard with halation. It can be a little bit too obvious, but I'm pretty happy with where that's at. Now we've also got bloom. And basically this adds kind of a bit of a glow effect to your footage. And again, this is pretty typical in film, but I've actually already used pro mist filter when I shot this footage. So it's already got a little bit of that glow. So I don't really need to add extra, but if you haven't shot the footage with a pro mist filter, you can always add this in post. And then we've got vignette, which you can enable. That's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna leave that off for this particular frame. Essentially the last two settings is film breath and gate weave. And I had to look up what these meant, but basically film breath is kind of like how on real film, because actual film is being sent through the camera, you can get slight discrepancies on how each particular frame has been exposed. And so that can give you a slight brightness flicker, which you might have noticed kind of semi-consciously when you've watched film before. Now I'm gonna leave all the settings just at default. However, I haven't noticed it super strongly. It's a little bit in Gorks's footage, but it's not super strong. So I'm just gonna turn the impact down to about 50. So it's not quite as intense. And then lastly, we've got gate weave. And basically gate weave is again in real film as the film roll goes through the camera, you can get some slight jitter just because the frames again are actually physically moving and that just simulates it. So I'm gonna turn that on. I'm just gonna leave the settings at default. And if we play back the footage, you can see it's looking pretty convincing. And I'm pretty happy with that result. And I think it looks pretty similar to Gorks's original frame. And then from there, literally all you have to do is just copy and paste effects onto your other footage. And you can go through each frame and just make tweaks individually, depending on how each frame looks for you. But I'm pretty happy with these. 
That's looking pretty good. That's good there. And then lastly, in order to really get that true Gorx style, you can just add a couple of overlays. So I've got a, just a letterbox effect, which gives it that four, three aspect ratio. So that's looking good. And then I've also noticed just a little bit of film dust on Gorx's footage. So all I have to do is just get a subtle film dust effect. You can see it's just got some little specks. Add that over the top and then change the blend mode to screen. And I might even just turn the opacity down to about 50% just cause here's a quite subtle. And then if we play it back, there you go. I think that's looking pretty convincing. Let me know what you think of how it turned out. So as you can see, Dehancer is actually a really powerful plugin. I've just gone through one application, but you can use it to get really advanced film looks. It's available as a plugin for all the main editors. So Premiere, Final Cut and DaVinci. If you want to check it out, there is an affiliate link in the description, which will help support the channel. It's definitely not on the cheap side for a plugin, but there's a seven day trial, which I definitely recommend checking out. And if you do want to pick it up, make sure you use the code create better to get a 10% discount on your purchase. And if you create any Anything with Dehancer after this video or you've tried to replicate the Gorks look yourself and make sure you tag me because I'd love to see what you've created but don't forget if you do want to create videos like Gorks sound design is absolutely crucial to his style so make sure you watch this video here where I talk about one setting that will make all the difference to your sound design